Let's look at the solution for our test and atomic op quiz using load link store conditional instructions. So we said that the first two instructions of the new test and atomic op approach are the same. Put one in R1 and then load from lock var to R2. The idea of test and atomic op is not to try the write until we see that the lock is free. So before trying the store, we should check whether the lock is free. That is done by using the B instruction here. So the correct answer should have been just B here, and I'm going to write it out to show you how it works. So the idea is that if we load a busy value, meaning a value of 1, then R2 is not equal to 0, and we're just going to repeat this. So as long as the lock is busy, we just keep doing the load link. The load link, without the corresponding store conditional, behaves just like a normal load. Yes, it's setting the link register every time, but we are not checking it, so it's just the same as if we didn't. But things get more interesting once we actually see an available value of the lock. Then we try to do a store conditional. So now we should use the A instruction. So we have seen that the lock is free, now we try to get it. And after this, we need to check, using instruction C, whether we actually got it. So if R1 is equal to 0, that means that our store conditional didn't succeed, we go back to trying to acquire the lock again. So we have seen that the lock is free, but between our load link and our store conditional, somebody else managed to write to the lock, so we need to retry the whole thing. So after our load link, we check whether the lock was free. If so, we try the store conditional. If we succeed, then we got the lock. So the waiting for the lock to become free is done using the same load link that will be part of our atomic operation once we add the store conditional when we see that the lock is free.